Hi, everybody. It's very nice to see you all here. I'm here to uh, in inspire you. Do I look like somebody who can inspire you? <laughs> That's what I thought. So don't worry. Uh, we will get to that part. But first, um, I would like you to, to bear with me for, for a second because I'm a, I have a confession to make. I'm a very sensitive person. And um, in order to tell you important stuff, I first need to relax a little bit. So if you would just give me a minute or maximum eight minutes <laughs> to relax, and um, that would really, really help me. So uh, in the meanwhile, you can, I don't know, check your phone or talk to your neighbor or, oh, no, no, please be very quiet because... If you're not quiet, I will be completely distracted. It may take longer, so um, just just bear with me. For a I'm embracing the light, and you all in the audience, and I'm embracing the light. Please, please, um, shh, shh. I heard somebody coughing, but it's. If you, if you could please not do that, that would be great, thanks. I, I thought of bringing my iPod out in case you were uh, noisy, so I could bring relaxing music and listen to that, but you're being really good. I, I, I'm not needing that right now, so thanks a lot. So that, that actually really helped me. So I'm just curious to, to see, it was, the, was this as good for you as it was for me? <laughs> did that, how, so how did that make you feel? Did it make you feel good or not good at all? I see somebody nodding, no, it made me feel awful, okay. Well, it's kind of interesting. I, I can take you back a little bit and explain the reason why I, I, I needed this time. It's because if I wouldn't have done it, I would have, uh, have had to fake it. And uh, for as long as I can remember, I hated I really hate people who fake it, who pretend to be something that they're not, who pretend that they're self-assured, but then you can feel that they're actually dying inside. And I don't know if you know these people, you've, you've probably all been there, that you've been in a meeting and uh, you feel this horrible atmosphere or this atmosphere of uncertainty or fear. And, uh, and then when you, when you address that or you, you, you say to somebody, oh, do, don't you feel a little uncertain? Uh, is it just me, or is it, is, it, is it? Do you feel that? And then often you get this response like, "Oh yeah, you feel uncertain. Hmm, that's uh, interesting. That's hmm hmm." And, and you feel that this person is telling you, "You sucker. You insecure sucker. I'm way above that." And actually, uh, when somebody tells you that, most probably they're lying. They're faking it because they're also, they're insecure and they put on a mask in order to pretend or to suppress this insecurity. And, um, but if you put on, if you do away with all these masks uh, and all this fake, uh, fakery, what you end up with most of the time is this agonizing uncertainty. And we all hate that, don't we? I mean, I hate uncertainty, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you do too. Uh, so we, we want to suppress it, or if we, if we don't suppress it, we, uh, we try to look for solutions, we try to define it. So uh, if you look here uh, behind me, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, what happened to us in 2009. I don't know if you remember it. We, we were confronted with the swine flu or the Mexican flu. And, um, uh, we were pretty scared at the time. Uh, you can, if you say now, I wasn't scared at all, we all know you're lying because there's evidence to prove that 
a lot of us were really scared of uncertain about the future. And um, um, what we tried to do at the time is we tried to define it. We tried to reduce risk. And how do we do that? Well, for one, we look for information. For example, uh, by turning to the media. This is a graph of uh, the me amount of media attention for uh, swine flu across the globe. It's, a, it's not a graph I drew. My uh, PhD student Celine drew it. And uh, uh, what you see there is, first of all, there's a huge amount uh, of media attention. And what we do, what we did at the time, we turned to the media to look for answers to define this risk. And you see three waves. The first wave is really big. This is when the, we had this idea that a risk m could be coming our way. Uh, and we, we want to define it. We want to know, is it bad? Is it good? Is it going to affect it? Yes or no? Yes or no? Tell us. So all the time, you see, with each wave, we are trying to define risk. We are trying to get the answer. Is it good or is it bad? Is it coming, is it coming to your, us? Yes or no? Uh, is it going to be severe? Yes or no? And of course, it's kind of silly to do that, isn't it? Because the essence of risk is uncertainty. And once you try to define uncertainty, it's almost like trying to force an optical illusion to choose. Like you all know this famous optical illusion of, of the image of the wicked witch versus the beautiful young lady, this one. It's almost trying to define risk is almost like trying to force this optical illusion to choose, to say, what are you? Are you the wicked witch or are you a beautiful young lady? And that's silly. Well, we all know that. So I would say that the next time you feel uncertain, or maybe I made you feel a little un uncertain, I would say maybe embrace it for once, if just for an hour, or maybe a day if you can if you can stand it because it could be that this uncertainty is the essence of who you are maybe it's yourself trying the real you trying to assert itself and if the real you asserts itself trust it it may be uncertain but it's not a bullshitter it's the real thing thank you